Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed, Baruch et Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim, Venatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch et Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. Atem Natavim Hayum Kulchem Yvne Adonai Elochem Mashehem Shiftechem Zignehem Vashot Lehem Kol Ish Israel Tabhem Neshehem Begelcha Asher Bekel of Machanecha Mehotev Etzacha Ad shoev me macha, love wacha, bivli, Adonai elochecha, uvalato, Asher Adonai elochecha, koi imcha hayom, Laman hakim odcha, hayom lo laam, Behu yihi elocha, lelohim, Kasher di Barlach, Bakasher Nishba, Lavo Taka, Lavraham Li Tak, Ulayakov, Balo Ham, Lavada Ham, Anohi, Koit at Hamli Hazot, Vet Hala Hazot, Ki at Asher Yishno, Po. Imanu Omer Hayom, Lifne Adonai Eloheinu, Ve'et Asher Enenu, Po Imanu Hayom. Ki HaMitzvah Hazot, Asher Anohi Matavcha Hayom, Lo Niflet Hi Mimcha, Belo Rechaka Him. Lo Vashamayim hi Lemor Mi Yala Lanu Hashamayma Vaikacha Lanu Vayashmienu Ota Banasena Belo me eva Vayam hi Lemor Mi Yala Lanu El eva Hayam Vaikacha Lanu Bayashmienu ota benasena. Kikarov elacha haraver meod. Beficha uvelavcha glasoto. Wee natati lefanacha hayom. At hahayim vet hato. Vet hama vet vet hara. Asher anohi. Matzavcha hayom v'achava at Adonai elochecha v'alechet idrachav v'lishmor mitzvotav v'hukotav u'mishpatav v'hahita v'ravita u'v'achacha Adonai elochecha v'aretz asher ata. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam asher natan lanu torat emet v'kaye olam natavatau kenu Baruch atah Adonai noten hatarah the following names for the Misha Beirach were received by Emanuel Congregation before September 16, 2020. Please share additional names in the chat. Laura Kina Aronson, Barbara Berman, Harvey Baller, David Burchett, John Cameron, Faiga Sora Bachaya, Carol Cohen, Linda Danielson, Francine Fields, Eslin Garb, Royce Gardner, Sandra Gagios, Carter Glass, Don Grandolfo, Mimi Harris, Werner Hyman, Jane Heron, Priscilla Hill, Harold Katz, Anne Marie Kuleza, Robert Langfelder, Louise Leigel, 
Roy Lloyd, Gerald Marks, Stephen Melnick, Lauren Meserve, Deborah Miller, Jimmy Miller, Nikki Moulton, Moshe Benchava Vanatan, Jordan Nirenberg, Nicole Newcomb, Larry O'Neill, Don Olson, Mark Perlman, Rodney Qualls, Alan Sager, Kristen Rau Skinner, Maria Sklyanskaya, Linda Stahl, Tali Stein, Michael Van Buren, Francie Volinsky, Virginia Wharton, Nahum Feivel Ben Gedalia Umasha. Additional names received before September 25th include Joan Bransfield, Amber Noy, and David Rosenthal. We hold these people, those named in the chat and the unnamed in our communities, in our hearts as we sing the Misha Berach together, as led by Jeff, Spencer, and Sammy Tweedy. It's been a while, something like four years in fact, since I last had the privilege and challenge to share reflections, a kinder word perhaps than a sermon, which Webster once defined as a tedious moral homily, back on point to offer a sermon for Emmanuel's high holy days. And I'm grateful to Rabbi Mirantz for the invitation, but I don't want there to be any confusion or concern. He has regularly offered, and I have regularly deferred. The last few years, because of my work with the progressive, a funny word for non-Orthodox, the small progressive Jewish community in Bangkok. Yes, there are Jews there. To the point at hand, since agreeing to share with you, I've gotten reacquainted with an experience familiar to many colleagues who would have a depth encounter and hear the perfect Yiddish word, spilkis. For those unfamiliar, ants in the pants is an insufficient translation in the lead up to these days of awe. In part, of course, because of the drama, the consequence and challenge of any cheshbon hanefesh, an inventory of the soul. For if we be honest, who doesn't fall short of the person we hope to be, pretend to be, wish if only to become? But as well, a less noble matter invades consciousness, more precisely the worrying of just about every rabbi who cares for the community he, and I'm glad to add, she may serve. The old bromide is that one has to be really on game, do really well, since this is one of the few times when many show up, let alone are listening. And for, in fact, forgive a personal conceit, my wonderful life partner, Karen, loves to go for late summer evening walks. And I'm grateful for so many things, including the opportunity to accompany her. However, one of the awkward tropes of those early evening perambulations would often include her observation on the phases of the moon, which, when it's Elul, the Hebrew month which precedes Rosh Hashanah, I would anxiously respond, Oi, when that moon's done, your husband is on the line. 
As for today, I've been reflecting on both what, I, what to say and searching for material that will help me convey and more vitally have you respond, even embrace its wisdom. Oh, well, why not add a little chutzpah as well as humorous intent? After all, I just turned 74. Embrace my wisdom. So consider, I still get the newspapers every morning, and I unashamedly admit I still read the comic strips. If you happen to be familiar with one called Prickly City, much of the time I'm uncomfortable with its creator's partisan slant on our nation's politics, which means to say I don't agree with him. Or to be less polite and more in keeping with contemporary discourse, he's wrong, nasty, argumentative, bullheaded. Did I mention mean and nasty? Well, I guess that's not true all the time, as in this recent offering. One of his characters, speaking about the pandemic, offers, we've been through a tumultuous time. I wonder what lessons we've learned. The other character responds, Zoom is now a verb. That's about it. Well, I suspect, hope, I believe we've learned far more. Indeed, the real challenge is how we might apply our hard-earned learning to benefit others and maybe, just maybe, heal ourselves. And that leads me to a favorite text of Torah. While not the frightening pace of the Akedah, the binding and almost sacrifice, the attempted murder of Isaac, it involves struggle. In fact, it's on the short list for most famous wrestling matches in history. You are likely familiar as Jacob wrestles with someone, something, and he emerges from that encounter wounded. The text says limping for the rest of his life. And even if it be metaphor only, isn't that a major component of any, I'd argue, every serious personal journey? We all encounter disappointment. We all must find ways to respond to tragedy and pain. We have no choice, for we are all wounded, limping, broken. And if we somehow are fortunate, we may identify with the reflection of the great mystic Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlov when he reminds us, maybe urges us to embrace the conviction, the fact that there is nothing so whole as a broken heart. So it is that Jacob cum Israel responds to his distress with a lesson for all and for all times. I will not let you go ki im berachtani until you bless me. So to speak, I did not want this to happen, but since it has, what now, what next, what can I do? For everything can be taken away from us with one exception, how we respond to what has been taken from us. You may share my amazement as awe, and awe, as there are people who endure the moral equivalent of a hangnail, and their whole world seems to fall apart. Their complaints pour out in endless variations of a plaintive, why me? While others, and we know them, suffer a kaleidoscope of indignities, yet they insist that even if an occasional why me may intrude, the really important question, at least for them, and a vital instruction for us. What can I do now? Equally on point, I get much of my morning news from NPR's Morning Edition. As someone with a more than passing interest in poetry, I'm a fan of Kwame Alexander. For those unfamiliar, he serves as their poet in residence, and every month he introduces a competition in which he shares a poem and lifts a line from it in order to invite listeners to add their own completions. In the midst of the COVID-19 lockdown pandemic, may it end soon, he read a poem by Nancy Cross Dunham titled, What I Learned from Grief. And one of the most compelling listener offerings was, What I Learned from Grief is grief is love that has no place to go. And while one can hear, and too many of us no doubt may identify with that pain, love with no place to go, my immediate reaction was yes, but there is always a place. 
even perhaps the lesson that we must integrate into our lives and act upon. There is, if not a place, there are things we can do, for love always has places, I wish there were more, more, a more inclusive word, to go, engage, to make a difference. And even if we are, alas, never the same again, we can make a difference with our love in other lives, with other persons, and in worthy causes. And here Judaism offers an interesting corrective, an assertion. For we often are stuck in the past, in the habits that keep us from goals, ambitions, the connections we insist we want, we so much need, yet so regularly sabotage. Perhaps you will acknowledge how often you may have heard or even offered something that resembles, when I finally overcome the barriers that keep me stuck in this or that emotional den end, name the particular challenge, neurotic and self-defeating behaviors, smoking, alcohol, drugs, abusive relationships, etc., then I'll finally have my act together. And then finally, finally, I'll be ready for some real growth in wisdom, character, and most importantly, behavior. So we postpone the very activities and actions that will relieve the circumstances that keep us trapped in a cycle of somnolence or if not more likely despair. Such matters reinforce the wisdom at the heart of the Jewish approach to life. Namely, it is easier to act one's way into right thinking than to think one's way into right acting. Rather than waiting for the just so perfect moment, we need to act with the conviction that you have to change your life in order to change your life. Nike made a fortune on a variation, just do it, so we can wallow in our disappointment, our hurt and pain, or we can get to work relieving another's. For in so doing, if nothing else, we can and we shall, I guarantee it, better ourselves. Yes, we are all wounded, or as the poet reminds, the world breaks everyone, but afterwards, some are strong in the broken places. Consider this instructive and true story from World War II. As the bombers that returned from their missions were commonly riddled, that an understatement, riddled with bullet holes, the first response was, not surprisingly, to add armor to those areas most heavily damaged. However, the statistician Abraham Wald made what seemed like a counterintuitive recommendation, namely, to add armor to those parts with no damage. He understood that the planes that had been shot where no bullet holes were seen were the planes that never made it back. That's, of course, where the real problem was. Armor was added to the seemingly undamaged places and losses decreased dramatically. I believe that may teach us that yes, we are wounded, yet we have survived. But the true lesson is to reframe the wounds we have endured as reminders, not only of our strength and survival, so to speak, our safe landing, but also that we can, if not fly, we can more than survive. We may thrive. And the key is to connect and care and uplift and inspire and share with others in this community, in all the communities in which we are a part. For love always, always has a place to go. Please don't assume that all of this simply comes down to we need to be nice, albeit I rush to point out I'm not against that. But there is an exquisite selfishness in our reaching out to others. For in our desire to help the other, to love others, we undoubtedly are engaged in an altruistically selfish act of helping ourselves. So an article that appeared in a recent issue of the Wall Street Journal, the title, why being kind helps you too, especially now. One item from that story. The key to our success is not survival of the fittest, a psychology professor at Stanford says. It's survival of the friendliest. Later, when we're kind, a part of the reward system called the nucleus accumbens activates. I've lived all this time and I didn't know I had a nucleus accumbens. Our brain responds the same way it would, here's the best part, 
if we ate a piece of chocolate cake. Well, I love chocolate cake. And shall we say this suggests a very interesting diet plan? One we might all find successful in helping to overcome our pain, our limping, our disappointments, our wounds and tragedies. Which is why I pray that 5781 will be the time that we do more and more. For in that effort, we will become more and more. For I firmly believe, as the late Israeli poet Yehuda Hamichai insisted, when I was a boy, I sang in the synagogue choir. I sang till my voice broke. I sang first voice, second voice, and I'll keep on singing a song. And please, won't you join me? Please sing with me. For then a joyful melody will fill our hearts, our souls, and God willing, that song will fill just a little more and more of our world. Kain yihi May that be God's will. Amen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher bachar bin v'im tovim V'ratzav divrehem hanemarim Be'emet baruch ata Adonai Habocher b'atorah u'moshe avdo U'v'yisrael amo Uvin vie ha emet va tzedek. Cry from the depth, says God. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like the shofar. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Yes, they seek me daily, as though eager to learn my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not abandoned God's law. They ask of me the right way, eager for God's nearness. They say, Why did we fast? And you do not see it? We afflict ourselves and you do not know it because even on your fast day, you think only of desire while oppressing all who work for you because your fasting is filled with strife and with callous fist you strike. No, your fasting this day will not lift up your voice before heaven. Is this the fast I desire? A day to afflict body and soul? Bowing your head like a reed, covering yourself with sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast? A day worthy of the favor of Adonai? Is this not the fast I desire, to break the bonds of an injustice and remove the heavy yoke, to let the oppressed go free and release all those enslaved? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to take the homeless poor into your home and never to neglect your own flesh and blood? Then shall your light burst forth like the dawn and your wounds shall quickly heal, your righteous one leading the way before you, the presence of Adonai guiding you from behind. Then when you call, Adonai will answer. And when you cry, will respond, I am here. If you remove the chains of oppression, the menacing hand, the malicious word, if you offer your compassion to the hungry and satisfy the suffering, then shall your light shine through the darkness and your night become bright as noon. Adonai will guide you always. Slake your thirst in parched places. Give strength to your bones. You shall be like a well-watered garden, an unfailing spring. From you they will rebuild ancient ruins, lay foundations for ages to come, and you shall be called the one who mends the breach and brings back the streets for dwelling. If you cease to trample Shabbat, stop pursuing your affairs on my holy day. If you call Shabbat a delight, the holy day of Adonai honored, and if you honor God by not doing business or speaking of everyday matters, then shall you take pure delight in Adonai. I will lift up your journey on earth to the highest of places and nourish you from the heritage of your father Jacob. For thus spoke Adonai. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Zur kol haolamim, Tzadik bekol hadorot, Ha'el ha'neeman, ha'omer ve'oseh, Ha'medaber u'makayim, Shechol devarav emet vatzedek. Al ha-Torah ve'al ha-Avodah ve'al ha-Nevi'im ve'al yom ha-Kippurim ha-Zeh. Shenatata lanu Adonai Eloheinu limchila v'lislicha u'l-kapara l'kavod u'l-tifaret. Al ha-Kol Adonai Eloheinu 
אנחנו מודים לך ומברכים אותך. יתברך שמך בפי כל חי תמיד לעולם ועד ודברך אמת וקיים לעד. ברוך אתה אדוני מלך מוחל וסולח לעוונותינו ולעוונות עמו בית ישראל ומעביר אשמותינו בכל שנה ושנה. מלך על כל הארץ מקדש ישראל ביום הכיפורים. Our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Of these wrongs, we are guilty. We betray. We steal, we scorn, we act perversely. We are cruel, we scheme, we are violent, we slander. We devise evil, we lie, we ridicule, we disobey, we abuse, we defy, we corrupt. We commit crimes. We are hostile, we are stubborn. We are immoral, we kill, we spoil, we go astray, we lead others astray. Vidui Rabbah, 
The Long Confession For these sins, our God, we ask forgiveness. Al chet shechatchanu lefanecha Ba'ones uvratzon Ve al chet shechatchanu lefanecha Ba'yodim uvlo yodim The ways we have wronged you under duress and by choice and harm we have caused in your world consciously and unconsciously. Al chet shechatchanu lefanecha bivli da'at Va'al chet shechatchanu lefanecha b'ritzat raglaim lahara The ways we have wronged you through our thoughtlessness and harm we have caused in your world through impulsive acts of malice. Al chet shechatchanu lefanecha b'chozek yad Va'al chet shechatchanu lefanecha b'zilzul horim umorim the ways we have wronged you by abusing our power and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'yetzer hara v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'kashyut oref. The ways we have wronged you by giving in to our hostile impulses and harm we have caused in your world through inflexibility and stubbornness. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'chachash uv chazav v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'kashlut rosh The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit and harm we have caused in your world by making light of serious matters. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha Besiach sif totenu, v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha betsarut ayin. The ways we have wronged you in our routine conversations and harm we have caused in your world through envy. V'al kulam eloa slichot slachlanu mechalanu kaperlanu. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. <laughs> Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'galui uvat sater v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'sinat chinam. The ways we have wronged you openly and secretly and harm we have caused in your world by hating without cause. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'frikat ol v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha B'ma'achal uv mishteh The ways we have wronged you by losing self-control and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'gilui arayot v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'imutz chalev The ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality and harm we have caused in your world by hardening our hearts. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'neshech uv marbit v'al chet shechatanu lefanecha b'masa uv matan The ways we have wronged you through greed and exploitation and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty in business. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha Behir Hur Halev Vaal Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha Bir Chilut The ways we have wronged you through our innermost thoughts and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. Al Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha Bechapat Shochad Vaal Chet Shechatanu Lefanecha Bechilul Hashem 
the ways we have wronged you by offering or accepting bribes and harm we have caused in your world by profaning your name in public. Va'al kulam eloa slichot slachlanu machalanu kaper lanu. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. We continue with the Cheshbon HaNefesh. This is our opportunity for silent reflection and introspection and personal confession as we look deep inside our souls and we take inventory of what we see there. We do our best to practice tshuva, our return to you, Holy One of Blessing, and to our better selves. <laughs> 